Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Elder Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is always an honor and a pleasure to come and spend some time with you in the Word of God. And we are so excited about each and every one of you. We thank God for just allowing us, allowing you and I to come together in the presence of the Lord Today, on the Balance of Life, we're going to continue the word of faith that we started on yesterday, talking about purification, the blood of purification. And uh, we, we spent some time in the word of God, and even after we got off the air yesterday, and even on last night, and we're going to add to this, because purification is a part of the consecration and sanctification. So we're going to, uh, this week, we're going to dive into all three of those things, purification, consecration, and sanctification. We'll be back in just a moment. tuned in you have tuned into the balance of life and I thank you so very much for joining us today uh, our phone lines are open if you are in the need of prayer while we are on the air please feel free to give us a call and we will definitely spend some time with you and keep you lifted in prayer while we're on the air our line our phone lines are open and the telephone number is 515-604-9825 the access code is 132317 once again if you are in the need of prayer our phone lines are open while we're on the air the telephone number is 515-604-9825 the access code is 132317, and when we are off the air, the telephone number is 813-336-2181. Once again, when we are off of the air, our telephone number is 813-336-2181. want to say thank you to our partners in prayer, letting also our listening audience the venues in which we are connected with letting you know that we definitely appreciate you we love you we thank you for allowing us to to come and be a part of you for those who connect with us via YouTube Spotify Tumblr um, all of the other venues that uh, we're able to to come and share with we thank God for allowing us to be a part of you and we thank you for being a part of our audience on yesterday we started off with purification and we're over in uh, the book of numbers and the 19th chapter and we began talking about the blood the cleansing what that means the purification of the unclean and we share with you how uh, during the process of, of cleansing how a red heifer without uh, blemish was sacrificed in the process of that this purification process was for sin and it was also if you know uh, during that time if someone touched a you know a deceased body or went into the place uh, of a deceased person so it had such significance and within the new testament we know that jesus christ became 
the, the, the sacrificial lamb for our sins. So therefore we don't have to go through the ritual anymore of sacrifice. But we, we, we have that atonement, Jesus Christ. And I want to read this to you, a purification for sin. Hebrews 9, 13 and 14, and we are going to go over to that area. Contrast the blood of Jesus Christ with the ashes of the red heifer. As the Israelites had in the ashes a ready means of purification, so believers in Christ have a ready fountain of the blood of Christ in which, by faith and repentance, they may find cleansing from all sin. By this cleansing they may draw near to God, receive mercy, and obtain grace to help in their time of need. Once again, if you have just tuned in to the balance of life, we are talking about the blood of purification. And that blood of purification, that blood of consecration, sanctification, is the blood of Jesus Christ. I am going to uh, go over to Hebrews. Hebrews, the ninth chapter. There are so many scriptures connected to this. And let me tell you, I'm definitely enjoying spending my time in the Word of God. And over in Hebrews, I'm going to start at the, uh, I'm in at the ninth chapter. And I'm going to uh, start at the first verse. It says, Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle made, the first wherein was the candlestick and the table and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all which had the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that budded and the tables of the covenant. And over it the cherubims of glory shadowing the mercy seat, of which we cannot now speak particularly. Now when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. But into the second went the high priest alone, once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. Now, yesterday when we were sharing, and I want to go back over to uh, Numbers, the 19th chapter, how the process went, and also the book of Leviticus gives uh, instructions on how the priest was to go before the Lord. Now, uh, if an individual did not uh, cleanse, and I want to go back here because it's so important, we cannot go uh, before the throne any kind of way. We just cannot. Uh, we have to be cleansed. And Jesus' blood uh, was that purification he he died on the cross for our sins now in the Old Testament this was done yearly and uh, when it came to uh, the cleansing the purification of the of the unclean um, that was a continual thing they had to do that continually but the blood of Jesus Christ was done once and for all so I want to just go back to numbers the ninth the 19th chapter and the ninth verse and it says and a, and a man that is clean shall gather up the ashes of the heifer and lay them up without the camp in a clean place and it shall be kept for the congregation of the children of Israel for a water of separation it is a purification for sin and so the ashes that they're talking about is is the ashes where the red heifer was burned and he that gathereth the ashes of the heifer shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the even and it shall be unto the children of Israel and unto the stranger that sojourneth among them for a statue forever so that was their process 
He that toucheth the dead body of any man shall be unclean seven days. He shall purify himself with it on the third day, and on the seventh day he shall be clean. But if he purify not himself the third day, then the seventh day he shall not be clean. Verse 14 says, this is the law when a man dieth in a tent. So that, that was the process then. And now we have the beautiful uh, atonement, the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Who shed his blood for each and every one of us. So let's go back over to Hebrews, the ninth chapter. And I'm going to start, I'm going to pick back up at the sixth verse. It says, Now when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. But unto the second went the high priest alone, once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. That's that consecration part before we can intercede before we can uh, begin to pray for others before any of those things anything we do when it comes to the service of the Lord I do believe in being consecrated I believe in uh, following the scripture of casting down every thought every high imagination that wants to exalt itself against the power and the authority which is found over in 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. Clearly, Paul tells us that we, we walk not after the flesh. He says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but money through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ that is a part of consecration before we do any service for the Lord we must be consecrated Hebrews the seventh chapter is is saying that also when he's referencing the priests I'll read it again. It says, But the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. And so the priest, even in that time, had to be consecrated first, purified first, before going to do anything on behalf of the people, before entering into God's presence. Verse 8 says, The Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, while as the first tabernacle was yet standing, which was a figure for the time then present. That was for then. We are under a new order. Jesus Christ came. He shed his blood for each and every one of us. There is no longer a need for sacrifice when it comes to the blood of the lamb Jesus Christ did that for each and every one of us he did it for you he did it for me uh, for generations to come that has already been done that has already been established he already died for our sins our accepting of him oh God He's already made the atonement when we accept him as Lord and Savior and we ask him to forgive us of our sins. He will do it. It says here, I'm going to start at the ninth, which was a figure for the time then present and which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience, which stood only in meats and drinks and diverse washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. 
Verse 11 says, and this is the eternal sacrifice of Christ, but Christ being come a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. The word, oh God, the word came down in the likeness of flesh. And the word then sacrificed itself for you and I. That's good. The atoning word, the word came down in the likeness of flesh and sacrificed himself for you and I. I'm excited about that. We'll be back in a moment. If you have just tuned in, you have tuned in to The Balance of Life, and I thank you so very much for joining us today. We thank each and every one of you for tuning in, and we're excited about what God is doing in this season. If you are in need of prayer, while we are on the air, our telephone number is 515-604-9825, and the access code is 132-317. Once we leave the air and you are in need of prayer, our contact number is 813-336-2181. And we're talking about purification, the blood of purification, consecration, and sanctification here on the Balance of Life this week. I think that it is so important that we understand that process. Who, who, who died for us and, and what that meant? What did it mean for the shedding of his blood for you and I we are no longer under the law of the Old Testament where uh, an animal has to be sacrificed and the ritual but the word the word came down in the likeness of flesh and the word then sacrificed himself oh God the word was sacrificed the word shed his blood for you and I I don't know about you but I just get excited about that alone for God is good and his mercy endureth forever we're over in the book of Hebrews and we are let's start back at the 11th verse it says but Christ being come a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands that is to say not of this building neither by the blood of goats and calves but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place having obtained a eternal redemption for us for if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to God purged your conscience from dead works to serve the living God and for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance for where a testament is there must also of necessity be the death of a testator for a testament is of a is of force after men are dead otherwise it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth 
whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoyed unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry, and amongst all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. So let's back up. Let's let's give some in depth to what we just read the blood of Christ the blood of Jesus Christ is central to the New Testament concept of redemption on the cross Christ shed his innocent blood in order to remove our sins and to reconcile us to God by his blood Christ accomplished the following so now we're going to give you some things that Christ's blood accomplished for you and I we're talking about purification consecration and sanctification this week on the balance of life number one his blood forgives the sins of all who repent and believe number two his blood ransoms all believers from the power of Satan and evil powers number three his blood justifies all who believe in him Number four, his blood cleanses believers' conscience that they might serve God without guilt in full assurance of faith. Number five, his blood sanctifies the people of God. Number six, his blood opens the way for believers to come directly before God through him in order to find grace, mercy, help, and salvation. Number seven, his blood is a guarantee of all the promises of the new covenant. Number eight, the saving, reconciling, and purifying power of the blood of Jesus Christ is continually appropriated to believers as they come to God through him. I know that was a lot, so I'm going to give them again. This is what was accomplished through the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ for you and I. This is what his blood did, the purification, what the animals could not do. Jesus' blood did it once and for all. See, under the law, under in the Old Testament, they had to continue to get a sacrificial heifer. They had to continue that process. They had to do it yearly. It, they, but Jesus Christ did it once and for all, my God. Once and for all, he paid the debt. Once and for all, once, he shed his blood for you and I. The word was sacrificed. So that we can have access to the Father. I don't know about you. But I'm excited about that. So let's give these eight highlights again. For what the blood of Jesus did. When we come back we're going to take a short break. And when we come back we're going to give you those eight points again. We'll be back in a moment.
you've just tuned you have tuned into the balance of life and I thank you so very much for joining us today truly God is awesome and he his love his his joy his peace is truly resting upon us and I want to say this before we go into our high points as I was just looking back over some old photos of our time and ministry and our journey the overwhelming presence of the Holy Spirit began to filter in and I want to say this to you whatever it is that God has given you to do during this season where we are in and and we're practicing social distancing and uh, I want you to keep this in mind perfect that which God has given you look back over your journey and perfect what God gave you to do grow perfect it give it your all give it 100% look back over where you have been look over where you are now and have an understanding that until God calls us home there is work yet to be done so don't give up hope give it 100 percent don't do half a job give it your all because remember we want to give god our very best we do not want to be slack and what we give him amen all right let's get back over to our eight highlighted points for what jesus's blood accomplished number one his blood forgives the sins of all who repent and believe number two His blood ransoms all believers from the power of Satan and evil powers. Number three, his blood justifies all who believe in him. Number four, his blood cleanses believers' conscience that they might serve God without guilt in all assurance of faith. Number five, his blood sanctifies the people of God. Number six, his blood opens the way for believers to come directly before God through him in order to find grace, mercy, help, and salvation. Number seven, his blood is a guarantee of all the promises of the new covenant. Number eight, the saving, reconciling, and purifying power of the blood of Christ is continually appropriated to believers as they come to God through him that's awesome I don't know about you but that is exciting his blood is continuing to do what it was meant to do that means for you and I we don't have to go back to sacrificing animals we don't have to go back to that Christ did it once and for all and that same power That transcended the day that his blood was shed for you and I the power still is there it has not lost its power it has not lost its value the power is still there the power still works the anointing still is evident as if it just happened a second ago an hour ago The blood of Jesus accomplished so much. This week here in the Balance of Life, we are talking about purification, sanctification, and consecration through the shedding of the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Don't take it for granted. Your sins have been forgiven. All we have to do is ask for forgiveness. He's already died for our sins. He's already did what the high priest did in the Old Testament. He went before the throne. But first, he was consecrated, he was purified. He was sanctified for you and I. We love you here at the Balance of Life. Stay encouraged, encouraging others along the way.